What you got there? <laughs> well, John, we're good. I don't know why I'm looking at the timer. This is a full podcast. The long anticipated full podcast on the small batch builds from Ally Munitions. So, uh, after, well, no, I said that wrong. We will air this. We'll premiere this on YouTube. It's, as you're listening, this will be premiering on YouTube. About 15 minutes prior to this ending, I will officially make it live on the website. The ability to purchase a small batch build. Just get that out of the way right now. And there is lots and lots of people wanting these. So you're going to have to be fast as shit. <laughs> Don't do like. However, if you haven't listened to the 12 minute talk about the raffle for number 008 in 22 Creedmoor, definitely go listen to that. But long story short, they there is we are raffling one of them. There's a 22 Creedmoor, the one you see before you. If you're you know watching on YouTube, and it will be available per raffle tickets, twenty dollars ticket. Then we'll get into why and all that stuff on that twelve minute talk. So go listen to it if you're curious, whatever. But be be sure, <laughs> say fifteen minutes prior to this podcast ending, 30, 15 minutes, whatever. I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna hit like everything. The post is ready, like the everything's ready to go. I'm just waiting to release it. The ability to buy these. And that's going to be on Friday. Uh, hopefully we can air this Friday. Because <laughs> I've been putting it on Instagram. <laughs> T minus two days. Uh, but anyways. So what we're going to do on this podcast. We've already recorded once. But I wanted to go back and do, redo it. So I can make sure I like, cover all my bases and everything else. Is literally just explain to you. Like the backstory of this project. What they are. And I'll let you know what all the rest of the calibers are. Obviously you already know. One of them is 22. At least one of them is 22. Great more. One guy said in the comments the other day when I posted up the raffle that it'd be funny if they're all three awaits. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? They're all three awaits and 30 odd sixes. I'm just kidding. Or am I? You won't know. Um, so, like I said, go be sure and go check out the 12 minute talk about the raffle. We aren't going to put a date on the raffle yet because, like, estimated value is north of $7,000 on these. That's estimated value. I'll get to the price later on. And I'm not going to, like, we're going to sell us enough tickets to recoup our costs, like our estimated value. And I'm going to get in more on that shit later on the podcast as to why we're raffling one and everything else. It's the same thing we did on 12 Minute Talk. But I think we should tell people this will be available at AlliedMunitions.com. <laughs> and obviously, so the way we're setting up is you can either pick them up in store. You have to buy them on the website. This is a limited, there's going to be seven rifles total available. Because number eight is right here on the table. That's going to be the one that's going to get raffled off. Seven rifles. You will be able to pick them up in store. Or if you want to have it shipped to your local FFL, you will need to put that in the notes section. And we will get in touch with you. And I am going to, we are going to charge you to ship them. I mean, that's just what it is. Like, it costs us to ship them. So we're going to charge you to ship them. Which at at the time of it getting shipped out, the person that will be shipping these out to your local FFL will contact you and take your credit card, get that shipping fee and all that kind of you know, business, 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 business. But anyways, like you're literally just purchasing them on the website and you will either pick them up at Al Outdoors in Midland or we can ship them to your local FFL. And honestly, you have to be able to pass a background check and all that shit. Like it's, it's nothing new there. But anyways... That is Al Outdoors in Midland, Texas. And no, the raffles are not there. You can't go there and see them and all that stuff. They are here. Off campus. There will be photos in on the uh, posting on the website. It'll be under small batch builds or I think small batch potentially. I don't remember what it called it. This will be a thing we're going to start doing from here on out. And I promise you it won't take as long moving forward. <laughs> um. And again, that's allymunitions.com or if you actually end up being able to purchase one, because I can promise you these will go fast. Uh, well, everything we're being told are going to go really fast. Who, right, at the end of the day, who really knows? So, 
AlloyMunitions.com or Allen Outdoors in Midland is where you'll be able to pick them up. Or we can ship them to your local FFL and they will come in two packages. Okay. The rifle will go inside this Save Your Soft case, go into a box, and it'll be shipped to your local FFL. There will be a secondary package with all your accoutrements, your manual, ammo, everything will be shipped to you because we can ship that stuff to you. Again, all your information will be in the description box on the post on the website, like uh, as far as shipping and all that stuff. Like Basically, what I'm saying is if you're a felon and you know you can't pass a background check, don't buy this. Don't try to buy this. Like You still have to pass a background check. I feel like I beat this dead horse. <laughs> Before we get into the rifle, Fitzy, I want to ask you something. Did you... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell everybody the calibers here in just a second. The, the, the caliber reveal. But before that, did you happen to listen to Rogan last week, the guy about the moon landing conspiracy? Uh, who was it? I guess not. I only listened to the Tucker Carlson one. Brent Burt, something. I don't remember his name. Uh, you should go give that a listen. But Implying, implying you can get past <laughs> the Van Allen radiation boat. That, that got brought up. <laughs> I was going to like... Honest opinion, do you feel that it was faked? Or do you think it was real? Did we Have we actually gone to the moon, Fitzy? Uh, no, Stanley Kubrick obviously filmed it. <laughs> Bart Siebel, Sibrel? He is, okay, so... Is that the guy? Yeah. Number one, <laughs> he sounds like the dinosaur from Toy Story. <laughs> and clearly, um, and clearly the, the Shining... Uh, was the movie co-opted by Stanley Kubrick to admit how he uh, faked the moon landing with all the uh, references throughout? You know, I've never watched that. You ever watched The Shining? Never once. All work and no play makes way to dull boy. I've seen like all the clips, so I kind of get the references. Here's Johnny! Yeah, especially that one. But I've literally <laughs> never watched it. I, I feel like one day I'll get married and have a wife, and then one day I'll just have a psychological breakdown and like batter an axe through the bathroom <laughs> and try to get to her. That'll probably happen. So... Bad ram, bad ram, bad ram. <laughs> I've never, I never even, like, I knew people, like, let's be honest, nowadays, like, literally everybody thinks everything is a conspiracy. Because like, it is. It was. Everything. I never knew there was such, like, a, this was such a big conspiracy. Like, a, I got taught in school, like, wait, hey. Did you get taught in school that there was a moon landing, or did they just do away with that? I don't remember, but I do remember we went to the moon in 1969, but that's mostly because of the Even Stevens. <laughs> so, there, this guy did make some good points, and then I did try to check into some of them, like, see if it was actually, like, the shit he was, but he is not. It's an interesting podcast, I'll say that, but he is not the guy that needs to be championing for this. <laughs> It's pretty awful. And then Joe's being kind of annoying. So it's kind of like, it was kind of funny. And he, like <laughs> This comment, all, all I can think of hearing these guys was inconceivable. <laughs> he was, he, he has a bad lisp. Aww. So that didn't help. Uh, and uh, apparently he was abducted by the CIA. And <laughs> it's, a, you, it's worth a lesson. I, that's all I'm going to say. But I'm just curious what your thoughts were on this. Because I, I I just, I never like, cons- like, I never even knew that this was a thing. I, I mean, I knew it was like a theory, but I didn't know how many people were so passionate about this shit. <laughs> but also, like, in the school, you got taught it went to the moon. But then you found out that it's probably bullshit, which. <laughs> the weird thing is, it's like, we, we, like, there's the whole, like, oh, we went to the moon, but we lost the technology to be able to go back to the moon. We don't right. know how we did yeah. it. Like, what the fuck? Or the fact that, like, just to get to the moon, the amount of fuel that it had to have had is like not even close to what they had, and like all the because like Elon said it'd have to like, like nine fucking trips to make it or some shit on fuel. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> it's one of those things. Like, could I have seen it happen where like we just like magically made it like like right, human lucky? <laughs> they got really fucking lucky, I guess. <laughs> it's it's so when okay so. Again, that guy is not the guy who should be championing the fact that it's fake because he just like comes off very tinfoil hat. But there is some very interesting points to be had in there, like 
the technology about the radiation belt and all that bullshit and the fuel thing is kind of a big deal. And like, there's a whole thing about how they fake the photos. And I'm just kind of tuned down now. I was like busy working. Like there are some interesting things, uh, or the guy that was supposed to be piloting it, uh, basically got on the news and said it's a piece of the rocket was a piece of shit and he somehow died the next day. <laughs> so it's, or, you know, all that. It's like, there's a lot of strange things about it. I'm just like, wait a minute, this probably is bullshit. I just start like dropping little, like, little, like, phrases and shit. That way, if I, like, <laughs> accidentally die the next day, everybody's like, yeah. He knew yeah. too much. Everybody's like, oh my God, he knew too much. <laughs> this thing must be real. So. Like, what that led me down, I'm just like, I was sitting there thinking, like, after listening to that, I'm like, man, that's crazy. What that led me down is like, there's probably a conspiracy theory for literally anything that's ever happened. Yes. So I just started, like, searching, and there turns out there is. <laughs> yeah, name anything. I can give you a conspiracy for it. There's the, the, my my most recent and favorite one was, like, this guy on where the fuck I found it. I'm going to tell you how. Scientists are liars because the core of the earth is ice. Yeah. <laughs> it feels Have like, you gotten into the, the uh, hollow earth theory? That's where it gets really weird. I, I remember looking into that like a, a while back, but it hasn't popped up yet. Because honestly, you know, like naturally, as soon as I start looking into this, stuff, like, it just gets fed into me. It's like yeah. flat earthers and all kinds of stupid shit. Mole people. That's a good one. <laughs> Lizard people and everything else. Like. And then, like, you have Tucker Carlson down there spitting out some wild shit about the aliens. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, this is weird. I don't. <laughs> That's a fucking rabbit hole. What what world? Like, I don't even like. I, I kind of at this point, I kind of miss not being in the know. <laughs> it's like <laughs> everything's not real. Okay, what the fuck? But anyways, <laughs> I just found that fascinating. Uh, and then, like, okay, so before I move. Uh, uh, past this the one gentleman that was talking about the core of the earth is ice he goes think about it the deeper down you go in the ocean the colder the water gets it's <laughs> retarded because it's just further away from the sun idiot <laughs> he's the <laughs> what is it for fucking retard <laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> He said, "He said, you, if you think about it, the deepest parts of the ocean would be bubbling if there was actually magma down there, because you're getting closer to the magma and the core." And, I, and I'm sitting like the whole time, I'm sitting there thinking, like, "How do you explain fucking volcanoes, you asshole?" Like, what? what are we talking about? But that is weird. It's like, I mean, even that we can be so certain as to be like, "Oh yeah, right in the middle there's this giant ball of lava." <laughs> yeah, that's kind of Has stupid. Has anybody too. ever drilled down there? Like, what? Yeah. What are we talking about here? I would assume that what? they come. Across- Why was James Cameron the director in Hollywood down there? I would assume that like we come across this. I don't know. Volcanoes are kind of like a, like a kind of a big point, like big, you know. But like the lava could just be like right there under this. Like the earth yeah. is deep as shit. The <laughs> no, the, that's where the aliens come from. Is is from the center of the earth through the water. Everybody knows that. <laughs> John, the water isn't bubbling, so clearly there's not magma down there. What if the center of the Earth is a nuclear reactor and the water is just like the cooling mechanism? For I mean, cl- makes sense. Like lava? Yeah. <laughs> magma. Searing <laughs> hot magma. Apparently, uh, some guy uh, discovered uh, there is whatever gas is in the air. There might be another Earth. It's like a very significant discovery. We don't hear nothing about that. All we hear about is something stupid Biden did or something Trump did. Like Here's the conspiracy. The fact of the moon landing is a conspiracy to make you stop thinking about everything else that's going on. <laughs> so let's just take the really autistic, smart people and have them focus on something incredibly... Because like, even if we did land on the moon, who cares? <laughs> what, is, like, what did we do? Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of like that Tucker Carlson video. Like, I don't care if we, uh, I don't care about the moon. I care about the Bob White population. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man, it's such a crazy world we're living in nowadays. I don't it's fucking social media. It's the devil. But anyways, I'm sure people are like, "What the fuck are Talk we talking about?" The fucking rifle, you <laughs> asshole. <laughs> so let's get to the small batch rifles. So, circa. 2018 maybe 17 we start okay so back it up even further the the 
the concept of munitions was there and everything else. And in the background, we're like, it would be really cool to eventually do some small batch builds or whatever. Like that name may change because Bagara already kind of calls their shit that, but whatever. Like do more custom packages and all that kind of stuff. So I, being me, started set upon testing actions and building rifles and all that kind of stuff. Like really exploring, you know, that avenue and, and looking for new technology and looking for like is it worth spending money here as opposed to spending money there like so like lots of research working towards a goal of releasing our first packages so i think i would i'm thinking it had been 2018 we discovered uh this company by the name of wolf precision who was doing something new which is it's kind of what i was looking for also i was looking for the the idea was like I don't I don't own a lathe I don't want to get into the, all that bullshit I wanted to be able to take barrel to, essentially on the bolt action platforms either take a platform that's already built whether it be from a custom builder or even if at some point may do some factory options who knows take the platform and then build out the package like the optic the ammo the calibers all that kind of stuff like build out a specific specific package for a specific job it's something that you wouldn't mind using. And like I said, always looking for something new, something good, like stuff like that. So I come across Wolf Precision, who has, I don't know, trademarked, uh, what's the other word? Uh, patented. Patented a new thing, which was kind of super interesting. So I ordered one to test, and it tested out fantastic. So then we ordered more for testing, and they tested out fantastic. So then we ordered enough components to build <laughs> so and then five years happened yes <laughs> so what like the 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 first okay so backing up i'm 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 going over this way too fast i built my sample oh, this is rad like this 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 is by far one of the most accurate rifles i've ever owned across the board through testing and everything else Something to this. Let's order some more samples. We ordered, I think, four or five more. I don't remember. But essentially what it was is you get your action, you get your barrel, and this this new thing, new technology. Or, well, I don't know if you'd call it technology. Whatever. Let's bit, put them together, test them. So then let's start testing out what optics we're going to run, what stock is going to be great, what bipod, what calibers we're going to chamber these in. I mean, I already kind of knew that. 22 Creed. And... Six Creed. There you go, folks. I, I let it. I let it out. The cat's out of the bag. We're gonna have twenty-two Creeds and six Creeds for this first match. So there you go. Like all like trigger, uh, case. You know all the accoutrements, but also you have like all this other new stuff coming out. So like at the bare bones, let's let's look at the barreled action first. So Wolf Precision comes out with what's known as the uh, I forget the name Ace system so what that stands for is like accurate chamber i forget what the e is now uh so essentially i'm gonna, I'm gonna dumb this down if you're curious about the ace system from wolf precision just go to the website wolf precision i think it's dot com and he gets in the full detail about the ace system so and it's simplifying it greatly and it's core, I mean, he he's like autistic as well, so he gets in like very detailed thought process of why he did what he did and everything else. And it's core system, essentially what it's doing is separating the chamber from the barrel. So essentially what I've found through, I've already got one barrel burnt out. The rest of them have quite a few rounds on the test rifles. One of the most consistently accurate rifles across the board I've ever owned. Uh, well, I sold one. It had a couple hundred rounds down it. I, it was it was heartbreaking to sell that one, but it was to a friend thing. So my 22 grade is about burnt up. I've sold the 6 grade, and I have another 6 and 22 grade, and another 6 and 22 grade 50 ohms. They are hands down, again, across the board, the most consistently accurate rifles I've ever owned. So, I mean, at its core, 
why the why it, it, go to the website because like it's super long winded about the curvature of the bear the bore in the barrel and all that bullshit like how to consistently machine these things like removing the chamber from the barrel would be a way to consistently get these things like optimal concentricity yes, exactly and i mean you know i agree with uh wolf precision on all their claims because I've, I've done the testing i've seen what it's capable of like day in day out uh, c- compared to the saddest part is and it got, you know this isn't a, a, a dig at anybody compared to a other package rifle <laughs> these are light years better shooting i'm just saying but like so let's go to down to statistics i always had that problem with that word Certain, like, if you have good ammo, we're, we're going to set ammo aside out of this. We're going to take it out of the equation. Certain rifle platforms, like, you may able to get a good group every once in a while, but I, as a whole, like, they, it shoots. Say I'm going to shoot a uh, sub, you know, say I'm going to shoot a quarter-inch group. But on average, this is like a three-quarter-inch rifle. And you know what I'm talking about. Like, a lot of times it's ammo and it's shooter and everything else, but across the board... Through tons and tons of testing, different people's platforms, uh, different kinds of custom builds. I don't, there has to be something to the concentricity side of this thing because consistently they are the best shooting rifles I've ever shot. And without like tooting our own drums or, or like, like we have access and I own a fair amount myself to a lot of different rifles. So, Immediately after testing and everything else, I fell in love with the system. Now, the other cool thing about this, the ACE system that Wolf Precision does, is once you burn out your barrel, now technically speaking, some people would call the 22 Creed and 6 Creed barrel burners. If you're going to go out there every single day and shoot a ton of ammo, then yes, they're going to burn out faster than, say, a 6.5 Creed more, definitely a 308 or a 223, obviously. But like you're looking at anywhere from fifteen hundred to over two thousand rounds. It just depends on how you treat it, how you clean it, and everything else. Uh, if you're loading up hot ass ammo and you're you know firing ten to twenty rounds a time, you're never cleaning this thing. Your barrel life is going to be probably close to fifteen hundred rounds on the twenty creed. Six creed is going to be a little bit a uh, little bit uh, more, say closer to two thousand. My twenty two creed now that I hunt with the most, it has right at 2,000 rounds. And the group's just now opened up to over half an inch to three-quarters of an inch, on average about three-quarters of an inch. Like, But also, I treat my shit good. I clean them uh, every 100 rounds and all that. And we'll get into all that stuff in a minute, but just getting that out of the way. But the cool thing about the A system is you can keep your chamber forever, meaning it threads away from the barrel. And it, this isn't... This isn't a uh, rimage type scenario. This is a custom action from Bat Machine. This is the Bat Igniter. And they use those actions because they're built to such... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Exacting uh, tolerance. There you go. That's the one. That's <laughs> the why, That's why Wolf Precision likes to use Bat Actions. I mean, also Bat Actions is a fantastic action. Uh, Especially with the price. Those things are smooth. Yes. So you have... These two components that actually thread together, giving you the most concentric setup possible. That's what it boils down to. Like, and essentially, like when you pair that with good quality ammo that has little to no run out on the projectile, how it's meeting, you know, that that junction between the the chamber and the barrel. If it's handing it off very concentric every single time, then you again you have the possibility of some of the most accurately shooting rifles conceived of. I mean, a custom rifle is better than a factory rifle nine times out of ten. Well, I'm going to say eight times out of ten because, like, that person on the hand lathe is probably going to take a lot more time and effort to get everything more concentric and all that bullshit as compared to factory rifles. But, again, like, that's a whole other conversation for another day. Well, if you go onto his website, he talks about tolerances and everything else and it gets down to the nitty-gritty numbers 
where what you're achieving out of this system as compared to a typical custom rifle system as compared to a typical factory rifle system. And when you pair this system, this barrel system, with quality hand-loaded ammo, it, 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 equ- it equates to a very fine shooting rifle. So, like, after doing our test, initial testing and everything else, we went ahead, like, okay, we're going to roll with this. Like, that's, we're going to roll with uh, carbon fiber wrapped barrels. These are IBI barrels, International Barrels Incorporated or some shit. I don't remember. Um, on the A system on a bat igniter action. This is a, you know, standard short action. This is the modular bolt. So we ordered them. <laughs> And then COVID happened. <laughs> so what ended up happening is like their supply chain fell apart on bats and wolves and all, like everything just kind of like, boo, like crept to a complete halt. I mean, complete halt. Uh, took a, like every, anybody who, anybody who buys or builds uh, custom rifles or buys the components knows that there's a wait time. Uh, even during the good days, a lot of components, there was a huge wait time. So you, you already have probably what's considered a pretty decent wait time on components as is. And then COVID happened and you, everybody knows what happens. Like it just, it, it took forever to get the shit in. It's just, that's what it was. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not a big, it's not a big deal. Cause there was the thing I was keeping my, my eyes on is that as a new technology was arriving while we we're waiting, uh, range finders and optics and everything else. Cause the one thing I wanted to make sure of is, uh, getting this out for what it is and what you're getting for the money and everything else, making sure it was a, an up to date package and everything else. So there was a couple things that we knew that were coming that were just like, okay, it's not a big deal. Cause we're kind of waiting on this, this new range finder or this new optic or whatever the case would be. Or during that time, I was also testing, certain optics and everything else because you know at the end of the day i'm going to choose what i think is a good fit for the package and it's going to be a good high quality product with good warranties so they finally come in well in the meantime <laughs> brass dried up so i didn't even have ammo to load for the sons of bitches and i'm just like you know what it's not it's kind of a big deal because like you know we had you know money tied up in the actions and the barrels and all that bullshit and at this point, I'd already chose the stocks, and it's KRG Bravo. And so we had money tied up in it, but at the same time, it's like, we ain't got ammo. Uh, I, okay. And I don't want to sell these with factory ammo. Like, I don't want to put it. There are certain people who do that, and that's fine. <laughs> and you can shoot factory ammo out of these, but we're going to ship them with 100 rounds of our ammo that we test them with. So didn't have brass for a while. We finally got brass and everything started cooking along again. And then some new scopes started coming out. Then some new range fighters started coming out. And then it was like, it was lots and lots of R and D. Like for a while, these were going to wear Mark fives, uh, which would have been a great choice. Let's be honest. That's a good, the Mark five, Leopold Mark five, 3.618 is a fantastic optic. I'm, I'm not going to say that any day of the week. Well, in the meantime, you know, I'm testing other scopes. I'm finding, like, this one's out for this reason. I'm not going to mention any names. That one's out for this reason, whatever. It, the uh, Vortex Strike Eagle 3.618 by 44, the newest version came out, and I got one to test. And throughout lots and lots of testing, I'm just like, wait. I can save the customer a fair amount of money. And I'm not seeing enough of a difference between these two optics to justify going with the Mark V over the Strike Eagle. I know that's going to upset and anger certain people, but like you got to keep in mind, like what I'm going for for this, like the ultimate goal of this package was to have something that was going to play kind of going to be a, like a do it all rifle, hunting, long range planking, etc. So I wasn't concerned with lightweight, but I didn't want it to be super heavy. That's why we went with the carbon fiber wrap barrel. That's why we went with the KRG Bravo over some of the other stocks out there. Cost was important. Something that's not going to be so nice that you don't actually want to use it. Because I, I built these to use, for you to hunt with them. 
Uh, aftermarket support and accoutrements was important in, as it pertains to the optics, the stocks, and everything else. And keeping it within a reasonable cost for entirety of a package, because I don't think... I, I don't think people understand like how much work goes into the, all this shit. Number one, number two, like by the time you put all everything in your package together, you're gonna. It's pretty easy to run into quite a bit of money nowadays for better equipment. Uh, so I, I'm like, at first, I'm like, I'm just gonna go with Mark Fives. Well, then we couldn't get Mark Fives, <laughs> which I'm, I'm glad. At this point, I'm glad we wasn't able to get them. Because what that did was it allowed me way more time behind multiple Strike Eagle three point uh, three to eighteens, and lots and lots of time in the field and everything else. And the more I ran them, the more I'm just like, you know what? Uh, there's not much of a weight difference. Uh, there's there's basically no length difference. This is a fantastic scope. I'm putting this on the package build, and I know this is going to be a point of contention for some people. But I, you know, it for someone who was stringent strong advocate for the mark five it made me change my mind because i i used them more than one so much that it, it proved itself to me and it's it's worth that price and it's not worth the the ex, extra cost of the customer for me to go the mark five route but you know if you're wondering why we even chose what we chose i was looking for something that's going to work with the 18 inch platform Relatively lightweight for what it is, more a little bit more compact than say like a five to twenty five or anything like that. Something in a mill reticle, something in a mill turrets and everything else. Out of simplicity, we'll get to the reasons behind that later on. All that kind of stuff, and it just it hit home with the ease of use with Vortex's warranty and how good their warranty is. Now all of these scopes on every single raffle has been tested thoroughly meaning i uh made sure everything was working properly like if, if there was anything wrong with these i wouldn't be selling them and i did do a uh, very simplistic tracking tests and everything's fine on every single one of them if something wouldn't have have, have passed the the ridiculous amount of testing i put these through it wouldn't be available so Everything checked out, and again, like that required lots and lots of testing, and then we finally started getting brass in. Then we were still waiting on six creed brass. <laughs> it was just like one hiccup after another. Like it was just, but you know, at the day, I'm, I'm glad we didn't just like rush something out or rush to put a, a certain product on, like all that stuff. Because in the meantime, the newest Vortex rangefinder came out, which is the Vortex Four Thousand. Uh, I don't the exact name here. I always forget. Vortex Razor HD 4000 GB. And I had to spend lots of time testing it. And I had to test a couple couple of them. Like I, it's, To me, it's not good enough to just get one of something and test it and call it good for the rest of them. I had three different ones. Tons of testing. Beat them up and all that kind of stuff. And I still that's still my favorite handheld rangefinder. And then there was... So we're getting closer. Like all the components come together. Had to send off the stocks to get Cerakoted because I didn't want them just to be a solid color. You know, that takes time. <laughs> so it's like it's one thing after another. But it's also at the same time, it's allowing me time to test something new that came out. And I'm like, oh, this is a little bit better than what I was a writ like this older, two years old at this point stuff that I was planning on using. Like this is easier to use and all that stuff. So let me get familiar with the system. Let me use it. Let me actually, actually take it out in the field and use it and all that stuff. So pros and cons, like cons, like this project took way too much time. <laughs> I spent way too much time because I wanted to ensure that this was a solid product. Like your hard earned money. Like I, I look at it as if it was me buying it, which I mean, I did buy mine to, in order to test these, but I look at it like that from that standpoint, like, cause I, I've, I've bought and received and uh, tested for other people and other package builds that the most nerve wracking thing is when you spend any amount of money on a product and something's not working properly. And it was literally just due to someone not paying attention to something. Now, things will happen when you're moving large quantities and everything else, or in shipping. Like, who knows? Like, one of these may not make it 
to their destination. Hopefully this doesn't happen. Knock on freaking wood because something tragic happened and it got messed up in an accident. Whatever shit does happen. But at the end of the day, I wanted to 100% positively ensure that it was nothing. When these get put in their boxes and shipped out or taken up to Allah to be given to the customer, I give it every freaking, like, I can't tell you how many times I've gone through these. <laughs> like a ridiculous amount. Also, the time I took to install everything, assemble everything, it's in testing of stuff and I don't, you know, I must have run the bolts a million freaking times to make sure nothing was going to come, you know, I'm not shooting your rifle that much, just running the bolt and then running the trigger. And, it, you know, a couple of things, like I was glad I did some of this stuff because like there was one issue with a trigger on one rifle, which I was very surprised. It's trigger tech that I was able to catch because I did test these things out this much and I was able to replace it with a better one, a new one, a good one. So cool thing. Uh, <clears throat> I, I will say this. I am ready to see these go. <laughs> I'm ready for them to stop taking up room. <laughs> you know, uh, oh, like it was, I swear to God, it was and the closer we got to like the thing. One, I would add stuff. I'm like, Oh, I should add this. Like it's worth it. I would want this if I was buying this package or like there was a debacle with savior and it took forever. Like the cases that we've been able to acquire very quickly and all that shit, like all of a sudden when it come time to get the cases, like it was never a thought in my mind. Like I should have the cases, you know, on hand very early on, which we actually originally was going to go with a different case, but stuff happened there. But all of a sudden, out of left field, like it takes forever to get to save your cases. <laughs> it's like a wild ass shit happening left and right. But and the, you know, the 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 pivot I made is like they were. It was pretty much close to being done, and I I wanted to add the ratcheting lever to the Magpul bipod from NX Defense. So I, you know, <laughs> it's like the 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 good thing about this taking so long is the fact that like more, more stuff came out in its time uh and i was able to like oh this it's it's so much worth it like the extra 10 or 10, 20 dollars to put the annex ratchet i don't remember what they cost the ratcheting lever on the bipod it allows you to tighten them down and then you know taking apart all the bipods putting it all together it's just more and more time racking up and then me Finally going over every single rifle with a fine tooth comb, like making sure everything's good to go, squared away, and all that stuff. But I'm glad to see them completed. I I would not be stamping my seal of approval on any of these if I didn't if they didn't perform the way I wanted them to. If I didn't believe in the packages being a fantastic, actual usable, fantastic package. And so, uh, and, and so, if you haven't gathered this, I'm very proud of what, we, what we've put together here. It's not too bougie that you don't want to use it, but it's also very tested, good equipment. I mean, that's the idea of the day. So, I mean, that's kind of like the the history. And, you know, I, I breezed through it way too fast because, like, it was... It was like one thing after another, but it was also like, oh, I'm going to use this range finder. And then this range finder came out. So then we had to wait to get it in our hands and test it. Like lots of that stuff going on, but it's fine. I will say this as far as like, you know, it's one thing, like I've built tons of rifles or I've, I've had, like, I do a lot of stuff. Like I'll either build a rifle rimage style. Like nowadays, nowadays machining has gotten so well that you can take these custom actions you can buy pre-cut uh, pre-cut barrels. Like it don't even have to be a rimage anymore, which that's also a thing still as well. Pre-cut barrels and then literally screw it right onto an action, and it's going to be as good as it can get. Certain actions, certain barrel manufacturers, and there are like there is going to be times when things happen. But like machining has come a long ways. You're able to achieve these types of things, but as a whole. I didn't want to just do like anything around the mill. And we may in the future, but as a whole, the A system is really like, to me, it's the key component to this. Because as I state in the manual, there's a manual. When you burn out, if you burn out your barrel, when you burn out your barrel, you can do one of two things. One, you can get with Wolf Precision 
in uh either learn how to swap out your own barrel because they do classes they do all kinds of stuff or two they can get you a new barrel for your uh chamber your ace chamber and it's just a cool added benefit and everything else so i kind of forgot where i was going with that be completely honest with you <laughs> so what we're going to do now is go through the manual uh i mean obviously everybody's probably like well, what does it cost and what what all do you get and i'll get to that here in a minute but so part of the package is your very own manual now I painstakingly uh, edited down the original 20-page manual. <laughs> That's no shit. To now it's one, two, three, four, five pages. Technically six, but the sixth page is kind of like a... Oh. I'm not going to tell anybody what's on the sixth page. If you buy one, you'll get to see yourself. But anyways, like originally I had so many pages because I like I went into way too much detail. <laughs> it was a little bit ridiculous. So I'm like, you know what, wait, this is a bit much. No one's probably even gonna read this manual. <laughs> so let's let's edit this down to get to the bare essentials. Like uh, number one is your proof page essentially. Page two is gonna be your package list. And it's basically what it boils down to is literally just everything within your package. And then it was essentially like a checkoff list for me because I signed it off stating that everything's going to be in there. Page three is torque specs, which is literally anything that could be tightened on this rifle has a torque spec. And it has a size of a bit or whatever the case, whatever you need to tighten or loosen said bit. And that size is denoted on the torque specs page, which I'll get to that more in a minute. And then there's general information. Uh, gen no, sorry. General information, care, and maintenance. So basically, I just this was the hardest part for me because I'm just like I, they have to know everything about it. <laughs> so I had to edit the living piss out of this to like, how do I get them the bare bones information that they need to take care of the raffle? So you know that's what that is. I'm going to go through. The, yeah, I'm not going to read it word for word. I'm just going to go through that. What's on there? And then there's the secret page that you have to buy the package to know, know what it says. But anyways. It's nothing big, is it? So what also what I did was to cut down on room is I included the manuals to the scope, the reticle, and the range finder inside there instead of me rewriting it. <laughs> so let's get to the uh, first page, which is like, it's why did we do this pa this uh, thing? Which I was also like a, the that was several pages in the beginning, and I I condensed it down to one paragraph. <laughs> But what you have here on your first page <clears throat> is the proof group. So what I did with these rifles is at the they will they will have they would all have had 20 rounds down the barrel. Now originally I wanted to go ahead and shoot 100 rounds down, but I'm like that no one's gonna be happy about that. Because like I wanted them to be broken in <laughs> before you got them. But I'm like, you know what? I'd have to draw a line somewhere, so I just went 20 rounds. So what I did was like five round increments, five rounds at a time, shot groups, and then on <clears throat> obviously zero to scope and all that stuff. But then uh, just went down there on like the rounds number 10 through 15. I just, whatever it shot, that's what I went down there and cut out. Sadly, that day I shot like shit. So, I mean, there's still... <sighs> half inch or better rifles like some of them are one hole rifles but anyways so on this proof page you have a, a little i actually cut out the target that it shot on rounds 10 through 15 and then also it tells you what ca uh, caliber it is the serial number of the batch bill which is also on the cap of the scope the rifle serial number and the range finder serial number and we'll get into why all that should support it here in a minute so some of that was kind of for me, and I'll get again. I'll get into the why here in a minute. So that's kind of like your most important page there, like you know that information. So page two is like your uh, package list. So I am going to kind of go through this so people can understand like what all is happening here. So the raffle in itself, <clears throat> we're going to start with the raffle on the package list. It's bad igniter action. With a modular bolt. There was a guy actually asked that the other day, which surprised me that someone would know that much to ask. It is the modular bolt. 
if you don't know what that is, go to uh, Bat. I think it's Bat Machine Co. And you know, find out about their boat. High quality boat uh, action, and it is a twenty MOA integral base. Wolf Precision A system. I talked about that a little bit earlier. The this is a IBI Hunter Profile carbon fiber wrapped barrel, eighteen inch. It is threaded, five eighths twenty four. This is a Trigger Tech special curved trigger. It's it's one to three and a half pounds per weight. Now what I did was I set them all to two pounds, just across the board. And again, like your 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 pull weights may vary because like scales vary. I don't. I got them all to, uh, close to two pounds I could potentially get repeatedly. You know, everybody knows how that shit goes. But So, again, you can't adjust it, all that stuff. Not a big deal. KRG Bravo chassis with a little... It's a, it's a It's been Cerakoted, but it's like nothing extravagant. It's nothing wild. So, what we did was like, <clears throat> there's either gray, green or tan stocks. If it was a green stock, we put some tan Cerakote with some splatter. If it was a... 10 stock we put green Cerakote with splatter so that's kind of like we kept it pretty simple but also broke up like the monotony of just a standard color they do all have arca rails they do all have the magpul cutie cups and the cutie cups are on the off side of the action which is where god intended them to be <laughs> so and it's it's bare bones again magpul Magazines. Now, there are two magazines with this rifle. One's just a standard five-round magazine. The other one is a five-round with a plus, I think they're plus two or three, I don't remember what they are, extension from Warren. That's just kind of like a little added thing. Uh, I, the reason why I included another magazine, one, I think you should have two magazines, but at least. Number two, like I'm not... I'm not completely in love with the worn things. Like they're just kind of, I don't know. So I, I took the cost of the extensions off the package of the bill and just like, that's something you're getting for free. <laughs> so, cause it's like, they're not exactly perfect. They do work. They're just like, as far as how many rounds you get in there, it sh- you should be able to get more than what you actually get out. It's weird. So again, I added an extra magazine and then just took the cost of the worn extension off of it. So yeah, that's where I'm at on that. Optics package. <laughs> Vortex Strike Eagle, 3 to 18, 44, first focal plane EBR 7C reticle, and this is a mill scope. Vortex Precision Rifle Scope Rings, 34 millimeter mediums with the Vortex Precision diving board. Any Vortex bubble level. So the cool thing about that, everything that has Vortex on it, lifetime warranty. So if you ever if you ever break or whatever. You can send it in and get a new one. And that was, again, that was just, that was icing on the cake for me utilizing Vortex products. So anything Vortex has a lifetime warranty, you can send it in and get a new one. That may, again, that's just icing on the cake. The, and the, like I said, the range founder is a Vortex Ranger HD 4000 GB. Go look up information on that range founder on YouTube from Vortex. It does a lot of stuff. At its core, the rifles are zeroed, and they are programmed with the rangefinder with your ammo. So at its core, technically, and we proofed them out to 500 yards. Past that, you need to. Past that, you need to do your own testing with your own suppressor, all that stuff. And these were all. I'll, I'll mention it later. These are all. I don't shoot unsuppressed, and I put this in the manual. These are all these rifles were done with a dead air nomad TI, but at the end of the day, you need to put your own suppressor on, zero your rifle with your own suppressor, and then go from there. But, anyways, moving on. I mean, I talked about the rifle add ons, the Magpul QD cups, all everything else, but it's going to come with a, it's already in, I forgot to get it out, it's packaged up. It comes with a Magpul MS1, MS1, ugh, blah, 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 blah. MS1 padded sling. And I chose that for a couple reasons. One, it has a lot of adjustability and you can trim them if you want them shorter. But two, that's a fantastic sling. Uh, the MS1, MS1 QD sling swivels, obviously you match your stuff. Magpul rail grabber on the bipod. Magpul bipod, obviously it's the greatest bipod ever made, ever even known to man. And it does have the Annex Defense ratcheting bipod lock. That is a, wor- if you don't, if you have a Magpul bipod, get the NX Defense ratcheting bipod lock. It's worth 
it's worth it every single day. So, gun case is a Savior 55 inch tan urban warfare. It's the uh, case, right? Nice case, good case, super high quality. You will be able to fit this rifle in there with certain suppressors. Again, that's a Savior 55 inch tan urban warfare gun case. Fantastic gun case. Comes with, I'm throwing in for free, free fitty, Coltac ammo wallets, 10 rounders. Comes with a TPH field cleaning kit, which is literally anything you need for in field cleaning. Great kit. And a set of fix it. Here we go with one of those words fix it sticks. The rifle and optic tool kit. It's like the bare bones essential, what you need to keep everything going in the field. And it all fits in that little case with the TPH field kit. So, one thing to note that I feel like a complete failure about. Those tools are everything you need to service this rifle. With one exception. And that is a bit. I thought I had a bunch. And I didn't. For your action screws. It is a 316... 3 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths bit. And you need one of those long ones. And I, I thought I had them, but I don't. So you can get it without it, but I should have had them in there. But whatever. It's a good little toolkit. Good to add on to the... It's going to be everything you need to keep yourself going. But anyways, moving on from there. So the next page is going to be your torque specs page. I'm not even going to go over that. This, it's literally what it says. It's the size of the bits you need or what bits you need to service everything on here. And the actual torque specs. Should be no reason. But anyways. Going on from there is general information, general information, care, and maintenance. So basically what I did was I talked about general information. It's kind of just letting you know what I just talked about. Like we shot 20 rounds downrange to get confirmation of the group, confirmation of the range finder working. And, uh, you know, I go into cleaning schedule telling you how you should clean these rifles. <laughs> And then I'm, you know, going from there, I got into rifle setup. So, and I will touch on this. These rifles right now, the way they're set up are set up to me, which I, I kind of kept it, uh, not necessarily dialed in for me, but like I kept it a little bit more uh, universal, essentially. I had other people look through the scopes and everything else as far as length of pull, comb height and all that stuff. Obviously, the KRG Bravo has a quick adjust comb height, which is handy. As far as the, uh, you know, where the scope is sitting on raffle, you can literally not have to touch it as far as, you know, length of, well, I guess it'd be length of pull on the scope. There are length of pull spacers in your box of kit that comes with this rifle that come with the KRG Bravo stock. Now, as far as what I did to true the reticle, I did it the, this, this is definitely going to be a podcast coming up soon. I did it the correct way. <laughs> which is each one again i kept it more universal than like really dialed into me but what i did was on these rifles the rifle was said to me the reticle was trued to the world with a plumb bob down range and then i set the level to that so keep in mind that's based off of my me my natural point of aim that may not be the same as your natural point of aim. And I go over this in detail in the owner's manual. And there's also videos on YouTube where you can look into information on, on this. If you end up with this rifle and you shoulder the rifle, your natural point of aim, and that reticle's turned completely off, that means your natural point of aim, you naturally hold a rifle very canted, which most people do. You will need to set up your scope and your bubble level to... To your natural point of aim. I don't know how, like, without getting into this, like, extreme detail where I have notes about it, I don't know how much, how much more I want to talk about it. Like, essentially, they're set up to where they were based off of my natural point of aim with a little bit of fudge towards, like, very universal. Like, instead of being completely set up to me, I kind of left it more universal and set it up that way. So, they, they are set up ready to go. 
But when you natural, your natural point of aim, get behind the rifle, it may not be sitting right. So you just need to figure out your rifle, adjust it accordingly. But it is essentially adjusted accordingly right now. So, and there's a, there's more additional notes about, you know, the ACE chamber system and all that kind of stuff. And then I obviously left my email in there. And I talked about, so one thing I will offer on these is if you buy one of these rifles, especially if you live local and where it's not that big of a deal, I will do, if you want me to, I will do once a year checkups on these. Meaning, if you just want to go out and use the piss out of this thing and then don't want to worry about cleaning everything else, once a year I will do a super thorough cleaning that I do for other customers at a half the price. Now, all that information is in there, you know, within the owner's manual. So, just more stuff like that. And like I said, you don't get to hear about the last page. <laughs> but, I mean, again, I'm, I'm definitely, that was definitely skimming through this quite rapidly. I mean, I feel like we've covered it enough. People kind of, you know, people kind of know. So, let's talk about price, and I already forgot. Do you remember what I have? Is it 6400 I didn't write that down anyway. <laughs> write this down. <laughs> and as I as, as I said, now there's one last 22 Creed available. Is it giving you shit? <laughs> <laughs> there's one last 22 Creed available because that is available for the raffle. But you still have when this goes live, there will be three 22 Creeds and four six millimeter Creed Moors. The 22 Creeds are 1 in 8 twist barrels. The 6 Creeds are going to be 1 in 7 half twist barrels. That's going to cover you for the gamut of things you want to run that are typically found in these calibers. They do come with 100 rounds of Coyote Tiro ammo, meaning the 22 Creeds have 22 Creed Coyote Tiro. The 6 Creeds have the 6 Creed Coyote Tiro, which is 80 grain LDVT. Now, if you purchase one of these, you get the 100 rounds of ammo and all that stuff. They'll still, like, again, through the testing of the original rifles that are based, they're the same barrels, same chamber system, everything else, and it seems to have correlated over quite well. Again, there's a, there's a lot of cool stuff. I would love to get into, like, the super nerdy detail on these, like things that I've never seen on other rifles before that these do do. Do do. <laughs> the, <laughs> the six creeds run our 80 grain ammo good. They. Again, my other six grades, I haven't shot yours that much. <laughs> run 108 grains. Like, they run a lot of stuff very well, and it kind of comes down to that concentration thing and all that shit. But same thing in 22 grades. Uh, anywhere from my personal 22 grade, anywhere from uh, 75. I've run anything from 75s up to uh, 88s, and it, and all, it performs fantastic. You know, that's our ammo, though, on the 22 grade. But anyways... They, at this point, they will be available on the website, and you're gonna to have to be fast. And all the read the description on the details. Uh, I also ask you for your shirt size because we're gonna throw in a hoodie and a t-shirt. There's also the ability to upgrade to an impact. Now, the way that's gonna work is it's gonna come with the range finder regardless. Like, all that stuff's built into the package. If you want to get a Impact 4000 as well, you have to specifically request it. Like, I don't have it to where it adds it to the price, because what I'll do is I'll just build you a separate invoice, essentially, for those who are purchasing rifles and all that stuff. But you're going to get it at a discounted price, and it will be installed, zeroed, and all that stuff. So, that is an option. Yeah, there you go. Um... I think that's it. It comes with them. I covered the list of what all it comes with, like all your accoutrements. And I'm sure I forgot to read something off, but it, whatever. That's a full, complete package. And these are, these things are amazing shooters. And I'm not saying that, like, just because I'm saying that, like, it, you see the proof shot. So, and I'm nearly positive. I'm nearly positive they're $6,400. I hope that's true. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, the future of small batch. So now that we went painstakingly through the process and learned how to essentially like how I wanted to 
test out for the packages and all that stuff. In the meantime, I've already started testing months ago, potentially years ago, other potential packages. And I will tell you this, uh, our next package is going to be something of the AR-15 variety. And I'll allow you to put your guesses down below. <laughs> but it'll come out much faster and stuff like that. But I'm always going to tease you all with videos and pictures and everything else. Because that's, that's the funnest part is like people going, I want to know, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And as far as like price point and everything else, like, yes, $6,400 is a lot of money to a lot of people. But when you start looking at the uh, the 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 quality of the components and what you get, the warranties you get with the Vortex products and all that kind of stuff. I should have charged a lot more for this, but we're not going to, like I said. Uh, but again, the, the end go with small batch builds, and it may change the name at some point, is do stuff that people are actually wanting. Then again, these are 18-inch barrels. Hardly anybody will do that. Uh, do stuff that's based around actual infield use. Like, I'm never going to put out a set of small batch builds without prior having the exact platform and doing lots of testing, it, especially if it's something new, it's like such as the ACE system and all that stuff, or the optics. Like, everything we're going to put into these packages moving forward and always or is going to be highly tested shit. And there are going to be times where we work with other companies on package builds and everything else, but it's always going to have to... It's always going to have to pass my pretty stringent quality and accuracy standards. Is it actually? Yes. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, I did run a poll the other day. A little interesting tidbit, which is also, it already lined up with what I, was, I had planned, what I'm working on anyways of what people would like to see next as far as small batch builds are concerned. And it was overwhelming majority. Last time I looked the semi auto platform had it won. So you'll, you'll probably, it'll probably be a month or two. You'll start seeing some teaser videos real out about that. And what we're going to try and do is try to make sure it doesn't take quite as long. <laughs> like I learned, if anything, I learned that pre-planning, for the next several packages is a thing. If we want to do this, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, well, it doesn't matter if it takes us five years or we still like put out a super high quality product, you know. But anyways, <clears throat> it, it get, they're available on allyammunitions.com, especially by now. I've already released that shit. The raffle we will run, I'm going to say like a couple weeks at least, uh, now that it's kind of out there. By the time you listen to this, you've already heard the first podcast talking about the raffle. We're going we're gonna to cover the cost of the rifle and then kind of conclude our rifle. And, then, you know, all the information, all that stuff, it's on there. That is going to be a 22 Creedmoor. That's pretty much it. Let us know in the comments down below what you think we should do next. Let us know in the comments down below what you think about, you know, the idea of doing a highly tested out platform. Or do you care? Would you... <laughs> you know, I don't know. I want to hear your thoughts down below about the small batch builds. Again, what also what would be another a different name? Because like I, I'm pretty sure Bagara calls their small batch, which I'm like, uh. But anyways, that's pretty much it for this one. I'm sure Fitzy doesn't have anything to add because he looks pretty bored and tired of hearing me talk about these goddamn rivals. <laughs> Buy them so I don't have to see them anymore. <laughs> I know it's you know. Dad was like, because this is the first time I've had it, like everything out at once, you know, the packaging of everything. Dad was looking at it, dude, really nice. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I really like them, but I'm tired of looking at them at this point. Like, I want this shit out of here. Like, it's 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 like a closing of a chapter nearly. <laughs> like, it's been a it's been an odyssey. But anyways, we appreciate everyone, and uh, we'll see you next time.